I brought up the rhetorical question in several previous videos. Are happy people stupid? Hmm. Um, now, there's another side to that question. There's another question that is sort of begged. Are intelligent people depressed? Or are depressed people intelligent? I wouldn't, wouldn't really put it that way, but um, does intelligence predispose one towards depression? I wouldn't say that, um, simply because we don't really have any way of quantifying intelligence. We can, as I've said in a number of other videos in a different series on uh, racialism, scientific racialism, we can look at someone and judge their, or we can observe someone's actions, we can listen to their words, but ultimately intelligence is in here and we can't get in there, we can't read minds to find out whether or not this person is intelligent. But we've convinced ourselves that we can spot intelligence when we see it, and we've convinced ourselves, of course, that we can spot stupidity when we see it. We can't. <laughs> Human consciousness doesn't work that way. The only thing that we can actually see is what our senses tell us about somebody else and what our cognitive processes um, infer from the observations that we make of another person. That's not intelligence. That's simply evaluating another human being and judging them, placing uh, a judgment upon them, whether or not they're smart or stupid. So the idea that intelligence predisposes one towards depression is in itself kind of a tainted conclusion because it presupposes the idea that we can actually tell whether or not somebody is actually intelligent. Um, I form the conclusion that if someone who is able to do uh, trigonometry without the aid of a calculator or a pencil, or who can um, use all kinds of big words, their mind can go all over the place very rapidly, they have an extremely good memory, and uh, very good analytical properties, but they think that everyone else in the universe is an idiot and life is stupid, um, I form the opinion that such a person is actually not all that intelligent. Um, simply because what they're doing is, it seems to me, as though they're deliberately bringing harm and suffering upon themselves by a negative attitude. That's not intelligent. If you ask me, intelligence is seeking to get as much um, happiness out of this life as is humanly possible and preparing oneself for the time when it's uh, time to check out and say, well, that was it. Here comes the Grim Reaper. Good luck, everybody. It's been a blast, or I gave it my best shot or whatever, but uh, nothing I can do about this thing called life anymore. Whereas I think that the kind of stereotype I'd referred to before about the cynical, sarcastic, angry, uh, but highly um, intelligent person who is actually, in my opinion, stupid, is likely to sort of go, life is awful. And then when uh, it's time to die, they say, well, go to hell, everybody, and uh, I'm glad I'll never have to see you again. Get lost, and I'm hopefully this is just a big void I'm, I'm being swallowed up by. Because you're all idiots. You're all a huge disappointment. Uh, now, that to me is not an intelligent way to live. Uh, especially when you, you're the sort of person that uh, places value on harm. And the ultimate harm is misery. And if you're not trying to reduce the amount of misery in your life, then, and, and especially when you've placed value on that misery, you're not very smart. Now again, this is an opinion. I, I want to make this very clear. This is just an opinion of mine. It's, I, I'm not trying to attack anyone for, for being this way. I know it sounds like it, but uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. I don't mean anyone in particular here. I really do not. Um, and if somebody who is intelligent ends up getting a depression. If they're smart, they will seek help for the depression. One of my favorite artists, and he still is one of my favorite artists, is the Norwegian Edward Munch. Everybody uh, who is uh, into angst and anxiety and depression and everything, and who is artistically inclined, 
is familiar with Edward Munch, and he's famous for ah, the scream. But he, my interest uh, in his work goes farther than that. Uh, the scream is, an, is a fascinating work, um, and uh, I'm interested in his life. Even in my early 20s, in the depths of my depression, I was fascinated by the man and his life. And one of his little-known paintings is uh, of a Danish doctor, Dr. Daniel Jakobsen, who treated him after he had a mental breakdown, Edward Munch. And it's the closest thing that Munch comes to, uh, I don't know, hagiography, uh, hero worship, whatever, where Jakobsen is shown to be this pillar of civilization, strength, intelligence, will, and, um, and ability. I'll link to the painting below. Jakobsen is shown to be highly intelligent and strong and capable and able to deal with things even as intractable as depression, anxiety uh, of an existential kind. Edvard Munch was highly intelligent in the sort of stupid sense of the word and that he had a negative value on everything. He was cynical about everything. He was sarcastic about everything. Uh, for a long period of time in his life, the only thing that he thought gave him w w that was fit to give anyone any pleasure um, came out of a bottle or uh, was between a woman's legs. Um, in the grossest sense, not actual love, but lust and everything. Uh, but he also said um, that all these things inevitably have their hangovers and we're back to where we were. He was sort of a morbid, depressed person. He would, I would even go so far as to say that he might have been an antinatalist. But he was willing to confess that his condition, and publicly confess that his condition was pathological. Or he was willing to allow or believe that his condition was pathological. Um, and that shows at least enough of an absence of the arrogance that comes with certain types of intelligence uh, to, in my opinion, show some intelligent or some, some intelligent ability to deal with the fact that he's got a pathological condition. When you say that intelligent people are predisposed towards depression, I think that what you're saying is the cynical intelligent sort of person or the um, undisciplined intelligence, the undisciplined intelligent mind is more likely to be depressed, possibly. And by undisciplined, I mean the person who lets themselves fall prey to all the passions, all the imbalances, all the hatreds, cynicism, sarcasm, negativity, and all that sort of thing. Those are passions and emotions and value judgments that we can place on anything. Anyone can do that. You can turn anything into garbage if you think a certain way. But don't tell me that you're smart when you do it. Thank you.